Hey everybody, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 266, and today we're doing battle with Gangplank Sejuani. And so, uh, as we explore this new 2023 meta with the nerfs to the likes of uh, Aatrox and Vayne and the Demacian Darken equipment, uh, it's time to kind of look at some of the decks that didn't get nerfed, right? We've uh, taken a peek at, you know, what you could do with Udyr. We've taken a peek at Champion Strength in this new meta. Uh, but now I, I want to take a look at one of kind of the old standbys. And Gangplank Sejuani is kind of interesting. It's one of these decks that has uh, been at the fringes of Tier 1 uh, for quite a while. I, I don't feel like calling it Tier 2 is fair. Uh, and it seems like it's a little bit better than kind of like Tier 1.5. So we'll call it like Tier 1.25 or something but uh, you know it's right at the edges of just being one of the actual top contenders of the format uh and since it did dodge uh all of the nerfs it should have the opportunity to push itself right towards the top and so uh it's been a few weeks since we've brought this to the battles with bus series and i feel like this is a good time to kind of come back and revisit it because uh, i do think it's quite strong and uh, i do think it's a deck that can potentially dodge uh, future nerfs, at least in this upcoming patch. I think we're due for an upcoming patch here on uh, Tuesday or so. Uh, the last chance gauntlet is in 10 days from the, when this video starts, and I'm pretty sure uh, we get a balance patch a few days before the last chance gauntlet. And so uh, it, I would be kind of like coin flipping, I think, in terms of whether or not something in this deck will get nerfed. Uh, and I honestly wouldn't be just been slightly under the radar and again i don't know if that's just because it's you know not that good which i think is false or if it's because people get kind of tired of playing these decks since this is a strategy that's been around for uh, over a year uh, or if it's just a matter that this was really just put down by Aatrox. But nonetheless, to push on to the deck itself, uh, this is a deck all about the champions. Both Gangplank and Sejuani have the same level up condition to where uh, you want to damage the enemy nexus on five separate rounds. And so we have uh, a big collection of tools to help us deal damage to our opponent on every turn of the game so that we can get our champions flipped on turn five and turn six and turn seven. We want to get them as flipped uh, as soon as possible. And so we do play what looks to be a lot of terrible cards, things like Warning Shot and Parlay, uh, aren't the strongest cards in the game, uh, but they are a means to an end in terms of uh, helping our champions level up and spending our early game mana to ensure that it's not like turn nine before Sejuani flips. Uh, to help kind of mitigate the uh, the issues with uh, all of this early game, just bad card playing, uh, we do have a lot of card advantage. We have the, the Eye of Naga Kaboros to draw cards, the Black Market Merchant to draw cards, uh, the Babbling Bjerg to draw only our champions, and then Zap Sprayfin uh, to draw some of our cheaper spells. And so while we are taking some card disadvantage between some of these weaker cards to uh, help level up our champions. We have a lot of ways to uh, refill our hands, even though we spent all that mana poorly, if you will. Uh, up next, uh, you know, if Gangplank Sejuani are going to be our core game plan, uh, plan B is going to be the Spirits Unleashed. This is a card that ties in with all of our synergies here uh, in terms of we can deal damage to our opponent on any turn of the game. We can activate our champions with this. Uh, we can use it to board clear uh, the opposing small units and then also giving all of our units a boost for the remainder of the game. Uh, our units tend to be fairly weak, but if you have units like Mirai Warden doing summoning on units and then you give those summoned units an additional bonus, uh, then you have some real strong bros uh, ready to come out for battle. Uh, and so that is the kind of core and key game plan. Be uh, willy-nilly, uh, hard and fast, if you will, uh, <laughs> with your early game damages. Try to level up your champions as quickly as possible, and then you have access to the Spirits Unleashed as kind of a plan B. Uh, some of the things I will call out specifically with our list, I feel like this is one of these decks that is fairly tuned uh, up to this point. People have uh, got it really uh, down pat since it's been in the format for so long, but at least in terms of the things I like and with some of the different versions I've seen played, uh, I don't like to play cheap spells that don't directly damage the opponent. Uh, I think it's extremely important uh, for the likes of Zap Sprayfin to be able to draw damage-based cards, uh, and so I don't like to play cards like Three Sisters or play cards like Troll Chant in the early game 
uh, that can uh, mess up our chances to hit one of these damaged base spells. Uh, up next is the card Babbling Bjarg. This is fantastic. I do really like the Bjarg. It guarantees that we draw the champions in our very uh, champion-centric deck, but drawing multiple copies of the Bjarg is, is pretty painful, and so I don't really like drawing multiple copies of him, so I only play the singular one. Uh, and then what I think is kind of the only flex spot in the deck, we are playing this one copy of Riptide Sermon. Uh, I, I think that this is kind of like okay. Uh, I'm not amped uh, about the Riptide Sermon. I wish there was a card that I like really loved in the format, but uh, I think this is another one uh, kind of similar to Spirits Unleashed that is just so on synergy with everything that we're doing uh, that it fits in kind of nicely here. And it, it, even now with the kind of, say, nerfs to Vein, it gives us a little bit of interactivity and the strength to come in and take her down. And so that's it. That's what we're going to be doing battle with today. Let's go ahead and jump on in. And so I checked the pay to win price. We are all paid up. Everything is premiumed here, except Gangplank. Sejuani's premium. That's cool for her, but <laughs> our, our boy Gangplank is the only one that's not shiny out here today. And so he's just going to have to suffer through it. All right. The resurgence of Seraphine. Let's see if we can take down this dumb dumb back alley bar deck <laughs> and so ideally uh, we would have a way to deal damage on the first turn of the game being on the even attacks i don't feel the need to get uh super mulligan heavy here and so uh, i'll hang on to the mirai warden but assume that we'll probably not find a way to deal damage on the first turn but if we did find a warning shot or something i would definitely play it this is one of these matchups to where uh there's no real reason to play slow uh, against um, uh, against Ezreal Seraphine. We just need to kill him as fast as we can. All right, let's chunk in these damages. Slightly awkward draw here. We don't have any way to uh, spend mana on the next turn. Maybe something will turn up, you know. But I, I definitely don't want to... Uh, you know, just play it slow. I, I don't want to be like, oh, let's maximize our mana and get the Eye of Nagakaboros down. We definitely want to just be punching in the damage. Alright, this is painful. We're going to have missed two rounds of uh, dealing damage to our opponent. We didn't have a, a, a turn one or a turn three way to deal the damage, and now we can't spend our turn three mana, and opponent's getting this Ezreal in unopposed. It's a, it's a real pain, uh, what's happening to us right here, but Hopefully we can still recover. We just have to accept it's like, well, I guess Gangplank's never going to flip this game. And so I'm not going to rush the zap onto the board. I think we can punch in uh, maximum damage with our Eye of Nagakaboros here. He's not going to be really excited uh, about blocking with his Ezreal because we just have so many ways to deal a point of damage. Uh, and so we'll see if he comes in with it. He does actually bring in the block. I'm very surprised there. So we may be able to uh, take him down next turn. But... Real pains here, real pains. He blanked us again on the damage. Just literal everything this game has gone wrong. And so, we'll see. We'll keep trying. We'll keep going at it. It's probably going to get to generate another Mystic Shot next turn. There's nothing we can really do about it. I guess we could have thrown down Zap, right? He's definitely a potential play on the round, but he's just a little bit too slow. And the Mystic Shots aren't the, the biggest deal to be coming in. It's actually kind of a nice uh, mana drain from the opponent. All right, here comes Zap drawing a warning shot. We're going to hit the good ones? Oh, we hit the good one. Go us. Something going right this game. As we've, as we've been spending a, a bit of time in our previous video talking about uh, the RNG and the lottery and the like, uh, I did not win a billion dollars. I am not going to be the newest billionaire in the world. So RNG is just all against us, man. <laughs> we, are, we are out here failing hard, both in the lottery and in the lands of Runeterra. All right, so interesting space for the round. I, I think... Since we have things like the, the Jagged Butcher in hand, opponent doesn't have any units on board, we need to get, like, something going. And so we could drop Gangplank. Uh, my worry with Gangplank is that he's going to come down and then just not do enough. And so I think that we can play Zap, uh, see what we draw. It should be a way to deal damage, right? Pick up Parlay here. Then we could potentially look to 
level up the Jagged Butcher, uh, depending on what opponent does here. Okay, so far that was safe. You have to kind of watch yourself with the parlays. There's a, a lot of ways for uh, opponents to kind of dodge them, and a lot of times it will be okay just to send a parlay directly at the face, uh, even though uh, opponent may uh, have a, a one health unit on the board. Sure. All right, taking him down to nine. Hopefully fairly safe. Like, he hasn't found an opportunity to drop a back alley bar yet. Like, this uh, doesn't appear to be the turn for it either. So, hopefully we're okay in that sense. And then I'm going to follow up with the Spirits Unleashed here. Uh, there's not a lot of reason to just go ahead and add the Shell Shocker. Uh, I think he's just going to be... Uh, you know, we're going to get the, the mana back out of him either way. And so we'll play him as a follow-up. Sure. Let Seraphine add up to eight. All right, there's the flip. So we know he has Ezreal in hand, right? He quickened Ezreal a turn or so ago, but he's only got four cards in hand and he hasn't uh, managed to... Um, he, he hasn't managed to drop a back alley bar, so everything should be very expensive for him. Very good for opponent, though. Uh, he he's probably just picked up two copies of Eye of Nagakaboros. There's nothing we can do about that. Uh, right, the you can't pick champions off of that card that he just played. So let, who do we want to go with here? This is going to be the big choice. Like, we we if we we can drop either Gangplank or Sejuani, but I don't feel like the Sejuani is super important here. I mean, maybe she's okay. She has the most health, uh, and it will let us hook the Seraphine out of combat. So let's see, if he starts dropping like I have Naga Kaboros, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. It's very expensive here. Okay. So we'll get to take him to one at this point. Oh no, that's just lethal. My bad. I was like, well, we got this time trick. We should be able to try and time trick into a warning shot if we need to. But it was enough for victory. GG. And that's the power in this dumb deck, right? You uh, just have absolutely everything go wrong in the early game, and you still have the, the, the power maintained to take down victory. Go us. Go team. Go squad. GGs. All right, up against old Pantheon. I'm okay to hang on to, to make it rains in this spot. I think we can do with everything but the Spirits Unleashed. Um, it, it's, like, kind of dangerous in the sense that, like, we would love to hit uh, his turn one small play, whatever that thing is called. The uh, <laughs> turn turn one small play, the, the faded unit. But it's going to be kind of tough to, to pull off. At least it's like when they added in the early game, you do have those opportunities, though, because... Uh, he at least has to kind of like burn through Pale Cascades. Looks like what he has here. He saved it uh, uh, to protect his bro. Okay. Hello, new best friend. What do we got here now? A Broadwing? So he's out of mana. Right, he can't protect any of these cards at this point, so we should probably just go ahead and parlay in on the bird. His uh, his Petrosite Broadwing doesn't have Challenger yet; he hasn't put a unit on top of it, so he will be able to make a big Broadwing next turn. But or here, but he can't challenge anything we have down with it. And then, given the makeup of our hand, we're just kind of like all in for dealing damage at this point. So we're gonna have to play the eye and then open, uh, try and chunk in a bit of damage, and then hopefully be ready with Gangplank two turns from now. All 
where I get him for four. And a little bit of Fiora. Sure thing. Interesting spirits unleashed. It's like if he doesn't open, we have a lot of a lot of potential there. Okay, I think we're safe to go ahead and put the damage onto the Saga Seeker. Like we're never, um, we're we're never punching in damage from this point forward with our with our ground based units. And so let's go ahead and try and set him up. I was more so hoping for like a Pale Cascade to come in just to give it a plus two plus two, but didn't didn't pan out in our favor. Right now we can't even clear the the Saga Seeker with the Spirits Unleashed. I think it's okay, though. Like, we're going to play Gangplank next turn. The opponent is going to have the opportunity to try and take down the Powder Keg, right? He probably has some kind of Strike card in his Fiora-based deck here. But uh, I think he's going to be our, our safe play. Interesting draw in the Riptide Sermon. Could potentially take down Fiora. I don't think it's going to be the case here, but a lot of, lot of power potential there. Yeah. So we're not dead at the moment, right? That's the that's the big thing here. He does not have the uh, the the potential to uh, kill us at the moment. Now he has it. We can try an Eye of Nagakaboros through it, but uh, he didn't have the lethal at the time. I'm really surprised to see him. Oh, he's still still got it in there. Okay. So you don't want to be blocking Fiora here. If he's going to tumble Fiora, we definitely don't want to uh, just hand him the OTK. But again, probably dead in this one. Probably dead. see what he can do though he's got two cards in hand we've got uh, a tusk speaker which has overwhelm we'll have the gangplank next turn also has overwhelm we have a lot of high power attacking we can do this next turn so i'd say our chances of winning are fairly slim but we do have a chance and now that was an interesting pickup in sejuani given that uh we we are in like kind of a really risky space here to where uh, we're kind of counting on Gangplank to get the wins, but like being able to to take Fiora down to zero power to stop all of her strike shenanigans, and then if opponent has some other kind of answer here, we can still maybe spike a lucky make it rain. So I think she's definitely the way to go. Gangplank would be the more high-powered way, right, if we were just going to come out and try to uh, immediately win the game. So that's a big old saga seeker, though. I give you that, friend. I give you that. Stand and fight. This should be safe enough. Hopefully, hopefully we, like, what does he have at this point to protect his Fiora from this attack getting a hit, right? If we get the Overwhelm with the Tusk Speaker, then it'll uh, activate the Sejuani. And then it's going to Frostbite all of the opponent's units. Hell Cascade's not enough to stop the Frostbite. Okay. Beautiful. Now we're really close to just having the... Really close to just having the lethal in hand. We've got the one damage from the Eye of Nagakaboros, one damage from a Make It Rain. Still got a hit in the right order, but... Lots of potential there. I'm just going to bank up all this mana. We could have added Jagged Butcher, but I think we probably just need something to go right anyways.
Dangerous play, not taking the open. Maybe we should have added a unit last turn. That was fairly greedy. There we go. That's the sauce we needed. Turned this one right around. Plenty of killing left, bro. You want to attack? Are you going to attack? <laughs> As this game winds down, I will have to say, I, I, I watched the movie Thor Love and Thunder last night. It was quite fantastic. I, I, I really love the Thor franchise. Ragnarok is what I think is arguably to be the best uh, the, the best Marvel movie in the franchise. I really just it, really enjoy it. Like, we, we have seen them all, like, to a degree. It's too hard to keep up with everything now uh, since you have to get, like, Disney Plus and follow all that shit. But, like, one of the things we did during the pandemic was watch the entirety of the Marvel franchise in chronological order, however that went. So it's like you end up starting with... I, I know you start with Captain Marvel, and then I forget what the next one was. It might have been like Iron Man one or something, but uh, it was a it was a, a fairly fun experience when you don't have fuck all to do because you're because <laughs> you're stuck inside. Uh, but uh, it, it's just it, to me, um, in in large part that uh, uh, the you, you, to me, like with a lot of things like the Avengers, you start to get in the space to where. They, they have to, like, focus on, like, 15 different characters, and you have to give each of these characters, like, a certain amount of screen time in the movie. And so it's like you get, like, 8 minutes of Iron Man and 10 minutes of Thor and 5 minutes of Captain America and 15 minutes of Black Widow or whatever. And it's just, like, by, by the time they get all that in with, like, the requisite amount of plot and everything, it's just, like, I, I've kind of lost interest in it and... It's just like with Thor, they always have kind of like the right amount of fun in it. Like, uh, I feel like it's really tough to leave any of the new Thor movies without being like, yeah, that was just fun. I had a, I had a good time with that today. I really enjoyed my my viewing of Thor. And uh, uh, I, I think they're also kind of like... The the thing that was kind of striking me as, as interesting is... As a, a former smoker, like I, I smoked for uh, like 10, 10, over 10 years, like 10 to 15 years, like 10 of it I was smoking cigarettes and then like five after that I was smoking the vape things. Uh, but um, like when I was growing up in like the late 90s and the early 2000s, it was like everybody smoked in the movies, right? <laughs> it's like literally everyone in the movies was smoking and... Uh, that's not the that's not the case anymore. They aren't out here uh, smoking all the time. But where where that kind of angle was going is like I, I feel like they were they were taking Thor and being like, hey man, it's so it's okay to have an emotion. It's okay for dudes to have feelings. And like it, it's to me, it's like such a uh, a change of pace as to what you're allowed to do in terms of. Um, uh, kind of e exhibiting the uh, quote unquote very manliness of uh, <laughs> of someone like Thor uh, and to say, oh yeah, Thor does have feelings and the Thor does get hit right in the feels on occasion. He's more than just the the god of thunder out here smashing uh, smashing a bunch of baddies. and so it's kind of kind of neat to have that aspect of it as well. All right, back to the L action though. Interesting, interesting set here. We've been able to just completely neutralize the entirety of his strategy. We are a little bit behind with our gangplank here, given that we did, um, we we did play one of those make it rains a little aggressively. I didn't want to come into this turn and need to be playing double make it rain, so I kind of spread them out. Now, as we go to drop our gangplank, he's not going to be flipped uh, just yet, but. I get that chance to flip if he puts a unit on the board. And so this, this space, we should just be sending this parlay to the face, right? So what's going to happen here 
is we're just going to attack with Gangplank and he's going to activate his ability. And that will kill the thing on the board. Then he has Overwhelm, so it doesn't really matter. But the thing that could end up happening here that would be a complete disaster is if we try to parlay this ghostly band and then he looks to play a glimpse from beyond or he plays a vile feast or he does something to kill his own unit and we don't get the damage in with the parlay right there's no need uh to be that risky here so take take note send it to face <laughs> So a little frightening. He's going to get a lot of summons on the round. But there's nothing we can do to stop it. Uh, we'll go ahead and Sejuani, his smaller dude, since he's going to get one summon off of a, um, a shark chariot, but this should be preventing maximum damage at this point. Then we have blockers for his dudes on board. Okay. I think we're safe. Left that point of damage at home. Prove your worth. Huh? All right, I don't know what we need to dodge, but I think we're okay. Oh man, I forgot to update our records. We're three and zero on the day. GG, bust. Good job. Busy talking about Thor and stuff. <laughs> It's so weird to me, like, uh, back to that, though, like, I'm, I'm curious if just, like, there, there's product placements in everything, right? Even watching the, the new version of Thor, uh, whatever whatever Natalie Portman's friend's name is, she's like, her, her I'm going to sit down and eat me some flaming Hot Cheetos. Like, you know, I, I don't know how much they get paid for that kind of thing to happen, but I'm certain that they're getting paid to do it. I, I, I wonder, like, back in the early 2000s, how much money, like, Philip Morris was paying to be like, I... Right, Brad Pitt's gonna smoke in this movie, you know? Like, uh, I'm really curious how much it goes. Like, I don't care. It doesn't have to be a Marlboro. We just need him to have that James Dean look to where we think that he's super cool and, and out here smoking cigarettes and looking edgy and stuff. And so I'm sure it happened. It's so, it's like, it, it is kind of nice to see all that kind of wiped out of the, uh, wiped, wiped out of the vision of, uh, uh, of the movies. It's like if you're, uh, if you ever were a smoker and tried to quit, you would completely understand how uh, how rough it can be seeing all of the uh, all of the cancer sticks on the big screen, if you will. All right, so reasonable enough set of damages here against deep starting to push through. It doesn't feel like a space to where I want to be like adding units to the board. His big play. Uh, is the Sea Scarab, right? He loves having Sea Scarab on the board. That's his way of uh, activating the deeps. And so if we can catch that trade right at the beginning, it's kind of nice for us. So uh, it's like if we add a unit and he adds a unit, then he just gets more clears with his Sea Scarab. So happy to take that away from him. Now, interesting space here. We do really need to deal with this Dead Bloom Wanderer. <sighs> I wonder how fast he's going to be, though. Let's just lead off with Make It Rain and see what happens. This is kind of meh, right? But we hit perfect. That's always cool. <laughs> but we, we just don't have the timing. Like, we could technically parlay and then put... Excuse me, then put the Make It Rain on the stack and just hope. Uh, it doesn't feel like we're in a, a bad enough spot to need to go that heavy, but... It was, it was an option. Now, what do we got here? Gangplank. Now, this is an interesting scene you'll have turn up on occasion uh, with your Gangplank. And we're going to do the preemptive warning shot so he comes down flipped. We In an ideal world, the, the Gangplank ability is going to get powered up by the powder keg and not the warning shot. And so we're just going to play it first to get our dude on board. If opponent has like a Vile Feast or something for the... Uh, for the keg, that's fine, but uh, you you will run into this quite frequently as to where you need to play some weird spell first and then follow up with the gangplank. Blow him to the depths, Blow him to the depths bro. Looks like a lethal. G, G. 
All right. W marked. Yeah, the joy of cigarettes. That's one of those things uh, I, uh, I, you, you don't see like people smoking anymore. It's so it's so random and weird to, to even see it turn up now. I'm sure people still do. Like back when I I worked at the bar, a lot of a lot of people smoked. That was uh, just kind of is what it is. It goes it goes with the scene uh, to a large degree. But um, it's interesting. I like I like our early game start here, but. Like, Zap is the one I'm considering getting rid of. I think this is okay to keep. I'd like to have something, like, a little bit more high-powered, like a Shell Shocker. Or not a Shell Shocker, like a, a Spirits Unleashed, but I think this is okay. But it's, like, it's one of those smells now that I think is just so wonderful. <laughs> like, like you always, you'll always hear people say it's, like, cigarette smells so bad. It smells like my grandma. Like, I hate the smell and everything, but I'm just like, mm, bring it in. Any Anytime you're, like, driving down the street... And that car parked to you next to the at the stop sign has the has the cigarette going. You just get to soak it all in. Mm. So delightful. <laughs> all right, though, we'll quit talking about cigarettes and Thor. We'll get back to the action here. Reasonable enough start. Uh, the the Seraphine into. Uh, into group shot is okay. The the big thing that happened with that turn is we were able to still deal uh, a point of damage, right? Uh, it's a, a real disaster if opponent drops Seraphine and they're like, group shot pokey stick, kill all of your dudes and you don't get to deal any damage. A at least in this space, we were able to um, we were able to get uh, that one hit in, which can be quite important a, a turn or two from now. So now we're going to drop the Shell Shocker. I'm going to play Zap uh, before we attack next turn. Uh, just too many good cards. Make it rain is good. Parlay is good. We, we should hopefully be able to uh, to clear out this board. I'm going to lose out on the mana on purpose here. It's like if we pick up a Make It Rain and then get to Make It Rain Seraphine and then parlay, or, uh, parlay down whatever remains. Just too good. Warning Shot's fine, though. Here comes. Here comes the squad. All right, got him to 13. Ready to refill with the Eye of Naga Kaboros. See how it goes. Who do we got? Jagged Butcher, Jagged Butcher. LOL. <laughs> LOL. Here comes all the damages. This guy playing Victor? Yes. All the eyes. All the butchers. All the damages. Let's go. Let's do it. Starts to get tough for his removals to be effective, and so, uh, right, all of his removals damage based, and so these three threes are kind of tough for them to deal with as you're playing cards like Drop the Bomb and, uh, I don't know, Electro Harpoon, Mystic Shot, a lot of just one and two damage options coming out of this deck. The third damage is, uh, is quite strong. So we'll have to see what turns up next turn. It's kind of interesting in the sense of do we want to add Sejuani or do we want to add the Spirits Unleashed? Uh, I'm leaning towards Sejuani. Like, if, if you think back to that previous game, um, you can see how tough she is to deal with just because she has this big mountain of stats. And it makes the opponent decide if they want to either A, try to deal with our width, uh, or B, if they want to go with our tall in Sejuani. We'll see what he does. It's like we are in this spot as well to where we can potentially just Eye of Nagakaboros out of a removal spell, which I think is probably too good here. It's just like at this point, all of our bad card draws are still exceptionally good, 
right? As we're drawing things like warning shot when the opponent's so close to dead. Um, you get a, a lot of opportunity to just lethal here right at the end. And even Black Market Merchant has a lot of good targets out of the opposing deck. Picking up a pokey stick when they're this low in health can be uh, really good. Good chance we just end up playing the Sejuani next turn, though. Like, th there's not a lot of cards in the opposing deck that can just stop us, right? There's not, it's not like we're going to play Sejuani and they're going to go, her, it's the Ruination, right? It's not, it, it doesn't exist within uh, Bandle City PNZ. So we should be safe to still just say, like, add Sejuani, Black Market Merchant, and have a bunch of dudes on the board. Because what would be a literal disaster is if we. Like, attack, opponent blocks one dude, he has a removal spell for uh, our 6-2, he only takes three, and then gets to play a back alley bar. Like, we lose that game very easily, and so, uh, at worst, you know, if we're down here adding in Sejuani's to the board, then she should uh, at least make them spend all their mana, so they aren't adding the back alley bar. So it's like he has to have weird shit now, right? He needs to have a, a stun to stop the Sejuani. It's just so tough for removal spells to actually uh, manage this board. Really Alright, here comes something, though. Decisive Maneuver. Double Ebb. Something's happening, right? <laughs> okay. She got big, man. The double decisive maneuver was doing work. Now what's this one do? It does some kind of heal thing. Okay. Let's add the let's add the black market merchant. Not a not a bad time for the song spinner. Give us some high powered stuff we can do. All right, so we just gained a million. I'm glad I'm glad we went for a more value centric approach to the turn. Let's just try and kill Seraphine at this point. I mean, if if he gets to untap with her, that's just a, a huge problem. Okay, so we at least got that mess out of the way. He's down to two cards. His, his power has been stripped. Seems good. Doesn't even, doesn't even kill Sejuani. So who do we want to go for here? Like, I don't, I don't think I want to drop the spirits unleashed. Like he clearly has an answer to Sejuani in some way, but I'm leaning towards just putting in the Riptide Sermon and then playing the Black Market Merchant. Let's make sure we have another dude on board. Well, I guess we don't get another dude. We just get this giant tentacle, but. says, F, my true shot barrage is no good anymore. <laughs> All right, let's drop a prank. What are we into here? Wallop and a puzzling signpost. I, I increase the cost on Wallop. He can Wallop Sejuani and we'll still be uh, in, in tip top shape. Got him. G. G. Almost said it's tentacle time. It got me thinking. I, I, I meant to talk about it's Morbin time a while ago. Now, that's something I, I, I didn't really pick up on. I didn't. Uh, I didn't catch, like, the three days that that was a meme on the internet. Uh, it, it wasn't until afterwards when everybody was like, LOL, they said it's Morbin time, and this is stupid. It doesn't it doesn't work for this movie. And 
I, I think it's it's bad in a, in a couple of ways. Now, it's Mormon time, like a, a, a dumb shit phrase like that, I, I feel like would have worked reasonably well with a movie that was fun, like uh, like Thor, right? When you come out and watch Thor, um, I'm gonna, this is tough. Like, you, you have to keep on to some amount of early game stuff. Uh, or But it's like, is the eye and the gangplank too much? Like, is that giving up too much in, in terms... Maybe we just get rid of the gangplank. Turn 5 is kind of far away. But, like, if you used its Morbin time in, in the sense of, like, Thor and had it just be, like, a fun movie, then it, it, it makes sense that... Uh, to, to have that try and be the catchphrase. But when you come into, like, a, a serious semi-kind of horror movie that is... Uh, that is... Uh, Morbius, then that was, it kind of like struck me as odd. I, I didn't think Morbius was bad. I think it catches kind of a bad rap. Ooh, this game is bad though. Because uh, uh, I, I, I feel like, uh, who is that guy? It's not J It's Jared Leto that is was the, was Morbius. I feel like he catches kind of a bad rap. He has kind of a, uh, higher than the personality, if you will, and uh, I, I think it. It doesn't always come off uh, particularly well, and so I thought the movie was okay. I didn't I didn't know any of the characters or anything going into it, and I thought I thought it was fine. I think, it, but I felt like that was the only thing I knew about it though was hearing the words "It's Morbin time," <laughs> and I feel like it it kind of hurt the movie in that sense. This game has just been disastrous. All right, well, we're counting on you, Gangplank and Sejuani, to do big unit things. We need, we need some help. But this is why we weren't going to come out and keep cards like keep cards like Gangplank in our opening hand. It's a little bit different when you're when you're looking at the Eye of Nagakaboros because it it does a lot of curve filling for you, but. That redraw into Gangplank here was just so awkward. Now the Mirai Wardens turn up. But hopefully we can just make him invest a, a, a ton of work into these stats. And so, like, we'll attack with Gangplank, he'll block with a Squire, he'll play a Mystic Shot or something after the fact, that's okay. Then we get to follow up with Sejuani next turn and hopefully he has to spend a bunch of stats into Sejuani like we should still hopefully be uh, okay in these senses uh oh is he gonna tack it onto our warning shot yeah I was gonna say like I, I don't really want to lose out on the powder keg it's not the end of the world but it's not ideal We gotta, we gotta get the level ups though at this point. Is Sejuani the play though? We, we kind of want Sejuani for next turn, so that we can, uh, so that we can do the vulnerable. But I also worry about our, uh, our, our mana, like. As we roll into next turn, we are going to want to say, uh, if we draw Make It Rain, we'll want to play a Make It Rain and try and clear and get the flip on our champions. I'd love to get this flipped Gangplank doing his thing next round. And so I don't think we have to worry too much about the blocks here, right? If opponent was closer to lethal, then it may be a thing, but he's still pretty far away at 12. Seraphina is pretty close to flipping, though. Maybe she was worth trying to, excuse me, trying to attack down. But it's like, just looking at this mana and knowing that we need to get something going. Uh, having the, uh, the, like, if we play, say, like, Gangplank this turn and then bank, we're missing out on the opportunity to play multiple cards next turn. Oh, he's just going for the flip. Oh, no, he's playing his free cards. It's going to get him the flip anyways, but... Okay. 
Alright, four cards in hand. Let's see what we can do. Sure. Interesting shield vault. Like, why Why would he play it? Is he, is he just primed and ready for Ezreal? Hmm. Is it, it, it strikes me as a space to where if your opponent is going to... Uh, if your opponent is going to start dropping, um, like, if all of our turn was just attacking with Sejuani, he would probably be pretty okay with it. All right, let's try and get some flips this way, though. That was a pretty horrible... Why is she so big? Oh, she's oh, from the shield vault. Okay, I guess that's fine. I see what she did there, opponent. Hitting on the, the dragon chow was kind of bad. All right. Bye. Was she in here the whole time? Dang. Alright, well, there's the flips out of the Riptide Sermon. We're still pretty far behind, though. Maybe we'll draw something cool with our Plunder cards. I think it's like a very real chance that we just lose our Sejuani this turn, but we do have the backup one in hand. I was, like, I, I was trying to piece together a play to where we had a good, a good go with this Fury of the North, but I, I just don't think it's here. He's going to just invest more stuff into Sejuani, though. I mean, okay. Say, watch this, bro. I'm just going to play another one. <laughs> Are you watching, bro? Now, do we have to worry more about the Seraphine than the Vi? I mean... She would be the ideal unit to take down, but we don't we don't have the stats to even bother doing that now. Alright, I'm, I'm eyeballing the signpost, but we're not gonna not gonna find the chance to use it. At least not on this turn. Oh, is this our chance? Is this our shot? Drop in the big signpost. Stop the hex obliterator. Just with all these spells being doubled, there's nothing we can really do about it. There's another Sejuani here to here to save the day. I appreciate it. All the great things you do, the work you've done for us. It's very, very kind, very generous. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, is this going to be our shot? Are we getting out of this? Let's we'll see if we got out of it. Finally got like a singular spell that we could counter. Okay, then we probably need to keep the eye in hand for the moment. Like, I I'm not losing our Sejuani to a group shot. Maybe it's okay. I mean, she she's... We're probably safe enough to get out of this. I think he's already played group shot this game. I don't remember. All right, 
right now. The Spirits Unleashed does kill two of his units. I think we're going to go for it. We can still play everything that we have in hand. It's just like uh, this gets us to where we have to Fury of the North Sejuani. If we let her die, then we do have to either... We can't play both cards in this sense. So is that okay? Are we are we happy with that? Just like replaying Sejuani instead of the Tusk Speaker? I think that's fine. His team's not going to get frostbitten here, but that only leaves like Zap as the unit to worry about at the moment. Got our our, our one damage Dragon Chow now as well. He's ready to party. Hot in the cold. Well done, back alley barkeep. Nice, <laughs> nice hook from you. Do we ever? Okay. Let's do this. We'll just hook in Seraphine and then try and get the kill next turn with Tusk Speaker. Right? We're gonna take him to one, make him have heal. Ugh. Oh no, this is gonna this is gonna look disastrous now that he has additional cards. Alright. He's only got two in hand though, so hopefully we don't have to worry about too much. Alright, Shell Shockers, it's Morbin time. <laughs> All right, nice little draw four. Couldn't have asked for better than that. Couldn't have asked for better. Hmm. Hmm. All right, well, we'll do the big frostbite. At least keep Ezreal from generating mystic shots. Hopefully, like, we're on, like, turn a million of the game. Hopefully he can't just OTK us with his Ezreal at this point. Ugh. We're gonna get OTK'd by that Ezreal. Damn. Okay. Well, that one's on us. I mean, I, we, the the thing with that previous turn that I uh, kind of neglected to think about was uh, was the Sejuani thing, and so I thought that we were gonna be in this space to where uh, we just weren't gonna have any units. So. We, we, like, attack, and then he gets the blocks. I, I, I neglected that Sejuani flip ability that was going to happen, and his blocks just weren't going to be any good. And so I, I think that with that in mind, had we said, like, okay, well, if we just kill Seraphine, we still have, like, four dudes on the board, then we would have been okay to kind of close out that game. Because that, that, that's exactly what went through my head as I saw that combat happen. I was like, huh. We still have tentacles. Like, that would have still been exceptionally good. <laughs> we didn't need to to go into that next turn uh, with the uh, with the unit still around. And so that one's on me. I, I think we should have handily won that game. But now we're just going to get in one more game. These Seraphine games have taken their requisite 12 to 15 minutes, and it's kind of cut into the video time. Just under an hour here, and so we'll just do one more instead of the eight. You can blame it on Seraphine and Back Alley Bar if you want. That's what I typically do. Uh, and so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll blame it on Riot. It's all their fault and all their mistakes. Printing dumb shit cards like Seraphine and Back Alley Bar. Like, if, if you ever watch The Office and you've, you're, you're familiar with the people and you know how excited Michael Scott gets when Toby uh, when Toby says that he's going to retire or whatever and move to Costa Rica. That is exactly how I would feel if Seraphine got rotated out of the game and Back Alley Bar got rotated out of the game. I just hate them all so much. <laughs> I just do not want them around in any degree. I would feel so good if that shit was just gone. Alright, so I've been trying to find these opportunities to where... Uh, we can get the damages in directly to our opponent. They aren't really coming along, but 
Uh, this is a deck to where I'm, I'm kind of happy if the board just stays cleared out. As it stands right now, we are up one card, right? We had a... Um, Uh, our, our one traded with his one, and then our single two drop traded with two of his cards. And now hopefully we can find our spot ourselves in this spot to where uh, uh, the Make It Rain and the, the Spirits Unleashed and the like will still let us clear these boards out. So reasonable enough Make It Rain. He's been taking the strategy of not letting us deal uh, damage to keep our gangplanks in check. That's completely fine. Uh, but we finally get our first tick in on a pretty good round. And again, if you're trying to play a um, uh, th this deck, whatever, the, the Jinx Lulu with the, the Biggle Dusts and you don't have any units on the board, it does make it, uh, you know, fairly challenging to, uh, to, to pull off your big OTK strategies. He needs a lot out of Jinx at this point. Now this one's slightly awkward. We want to get as good of a Spirits Unleashed as we can. But, it's like I know that he has these multiple Poros in hand. We probably just have to do it now. I'm fine to take 7 on the round, but we're probably not going to get the double Poros. Okay, so what do we got here? The eye should be good for next turn. So let's just go ahead and drop Gangplank. He's going to have to start responding to this stuff that we're putting on the board. And when he's on the defensive, his units are dog shit blockers. And so I think we should be, at least be in a space to where if he wants to open attack next turn, he's going to have to uh, like really compete with what we're bringing. We do still have the Eye of Naga Kaboros to say drop in front of Lulu as a surprise. The thing I was curious with was if he was going to put a block in front of Gangplank to take him to four health and then try to like Lulu hook the Gangplank down next turn. Looks like it might still be on the table, but not his direct game plan. He might spend a burn spell or something. Lining up and get excited would make sense. And the Biggle Dust. Alright, so I mean, we probably just have to block Jinx at this point. She's not uh, the idealist of blocks, but we can't just be immediately falling down into Death Rocket range. So we'll... we'll uh, I mean, maybe takes us to two. I think we're just dead. He can't death rocket this turn, which is our uh, our saving grace for the round. Where is our Gangplank? Alright, so let's do this. Let's lead off with Zap. Pick up a Parlay. It's a little too slow. We need to get, like, the, the guaranteed damage to face this turn. So let's just do this. We'll just go ahead and Parlay face. Boom it right there. Right to the Nugget. <laughs> and we're pretty close to lethal, as it is. So we'll see if we can't get through here and dodge a removal spell or whatever. He's got to draw off of the top next turn, and so maybe we'll get an opportunity there. Of 
Wahoo. Well, here comes the squad. <laughs> Let's see if he directly picked up the burn spell. If he didn't directly pick it up, I, I didn't do any math here, but he may just have to block Gangplank with his Jinx, uh, which would be pretty cool as well. So that's lethal. Where are we at now? As long as the as long as the the jinx is dead, then we can we can still be okay. Alright, his board's gone. So we should be fine here, right? We we talked about in the in the beginning of the video liking how Zap only draws cards that deal damage. Uh, we're guaranteed to pick up at least a point of damage here. No three sisters coming at us. Alright, get ready for that burst kill. That's the way to get your kills is with burst. GG'd him. So, alright. Not a bad set of games. A nice 6 and one set of battles. We, uh, maybe... Uh, punted a little bit in that singular loss and so pretty good stuff i mean again it's a pretty good deck it's been a good deck for a while uh and it, it's most certainly a pretty strong ladder climber there's uh it's one of these decks as we kind of talked about strategies in the best of one time winders as to where uh we we are putting forth this idea of having either one or two decks that was just kind of like good against the field and then uh if we are playing a, a one deck good against the field, then having like two really polarized decks to where one's like really good against control, one's really good against aggro, uh, or playing a, a, a set of where we just have like two um, middle of the road decks, but then one really like super polarized matchup, say like one deck that's just like really good against Shadow Isles control. Um, and, and Gangplank Sejuani was one of those decks that we talked about as being just kind of good against everything. Uh, and that's what this does against a lot of lineups. It's a it's a strategy that it's not as deep in as the Powder Pandemonium deck is to where you're just doing stuff completely different than all the other decks in the format, right? Like playing Powder Pandemonium, it, it doesn't like aggro like the aggro decks, but it has a lot of burn. Uh, it doesn't combo like the combo decks, but it does have a lot of like uh, big Powder Monkey based oops, I killed you combos to it. And uh the, this deck has a lot of that similar kind of feel to it, as to where you're not just like flooding the board with width and playing Spirits Unleashed, and you're not just playing like all these burn spells to the face. It has like a lot of different kind of angles to it that uh, it, it's tough to say, okay, I'm playing a control deck today, and I'm doing this kind of mid-rangey stuff today, or I'm doing this or doing that, and have it interact with this deck very well. And so has a, a, a lot of that going for it. And so I, I think it's, again, it's one that you should probably definitely have on your radar. It should potentially be a tier one deck now. Uh, and again, if you're someone looking towards seasonals, I, I think it's a deck that may escape the next balance patch without having any nerfs to it. And so uh, it's definitely one to keep on the radar and keep uh, keep your your attention to because it's it's definitely a good one. And so... Good stuff. I was happy with the list. I was happy with the games. I was happy with the amount of fun that I had, and I hope you had fun too. So that's going to do it for us today. Hope everyone enjoyed the video. Hope you maybe learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching. This is Bust, and we thank you for being here.